So one of the things, if you recall, during the Equifax breach was that when you signed in initially, they tried to do this. When you signed in to see if you if your stuff has been given out. And I mentioned uh, in that interview that we had on Friday or I think it was on Thursday that I had frozen all my accounts after that, because when I went through, it said, yeah, you got a problem. Here's our free, you know, credit protection service. And apparently at one point during the wake of that, if you signed up for that, you automatically, when it hit, I agree, you automatically agreed to arbitration. Now, here's the thing. When you're talking about two different parties who are basically economically entering an agreement with basically the same power dynamic, okay? Okay more or less. No one's leveraging one thing over another. And arbitration is fine to those instances. But what we have going on in this country is corporations forcing us into arbitration situations that make it much harder for us to get redress. And it's not just because in an arbitration system it's going to be... um, fair and we won't get paid out it's just that financially speaking if we don't have the ability to go let's say into a class action into an arbitration situation if we can't band with other people it's not worth our while this is coming out of that concepcion case in california where at&t charged all their customers an extra three bucks and continually did it And the court would not allow all of the customers to band together. And of course, it's it's not worth it for anybody to go in to, to get three bucks back or whatever that amount was. So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau had an arbitration rule, which inhibited a company's ability to force you into arbitration. All right, we, you know, we see these in employee things, and that's a lot of the reason why you don't hear, uh, in some instances, like issues of sexual harassment and whatnot, because there's some type of arbitration, forced arbitration in, um, in labor disputes. So it's CFPB rule number one. Congress, the Senate in particular, has until November 13th to use a Congressional Review Act resolution. This is the thing where any uh, regulations passed in the last six months of the prior administration can be undone in the first, I don't know what it is, 10 months of the next congressional session. And they have a week and a half to do this. And Treasury Department is the one pushing this. Um, There's still an opportunity. We should tweet out. uh, Dave Dayan has talked about who are basically fence sitters on this because it's a, 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 it's a congressional review act. Uh, They only need a, a simple majority vote. There are swing votes in the rule are Kennedy from Louisiana, Collins from Maine, Portman from Ohio, Murkowski. So if you uh, live in those states in particular, but if you just want to randomly call them, it's worth it. It's important. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.